Hi everyone, welcome to part two of our Tails and Tails Animal STEM Grab and Go. So you need to have your grab and go bag on you. I want you to open it up and take out your paper packet and have everything on the first page ready to go before you go forward. So if you don't have any, everything on that first page, the one that looks like this, down here, if you don't have all this, you can pause the video and come back. But for those of you that have everything ready, let's get started. So what are we talking about today? I mentioned it last time, but just in case you forgot, we are talking about how animals stay warm in cold places and why sharks float. So we'll start with how animals stay warm in cold places. I want you to go to the page marked warm blood cold home and we have four animals here an emperor penguin a polar bear a harp seal and an orca or killer whale now these animals all live in very very cold places but they are warm-blooded like us so think about how it would be like to go outside on a very very cold day with a swimsuit on and now think about somewhere that gets so much colder than New Jersey. It gets so cold that people can't even live there without a lot of special protection. So, wouldn't be good, right? It would be very uncomfortable. We wouldn't be able to live there. So, how do animals that are warm-blooded like us do it? Three of them are mammals. One is a bird. Do you know which one's a bird? Penguin. Okay, so I want you to look at them and see if you can notice if you notice anything that they have in common. I will tell you that that harp seal is a baby, and I want you to look at the baby penguin compared to the adult. So some of the animals have things in common. The polar bear has fur. The baby penguin has fluffy down feathers, and the harp seal has fur as well. So, but the killer whale really doesn't. So they all don't have that in common, which is a way that animals do stay warm with fur, like our hair. So how do they all stay warm? Well, there is one thing they all have in common, and that is they all have blubber. It's really a funny word that means a very thick layer of fat right under their skin. And that helps keep them warm. And for the animals who live in the water and go in the water, which is all of these four animals, the polar bear doesn't stay there, but it definitely goes in the water to get food. It also helps them float. But the main thing we're gonna talk about is that it is going to keep them warm. So how does blubber do that? Can you think of why they might have a thicker layer of fat under their skin than we do. They live in colder places, so maybe that really thick layer of fat helps. All right, we are going to do an experiment now that will show you exactly how that blubber works. So move on to the next page and get ready for experiment number one. All right, let's get ready for our first experiment. What I need you to have is that glass of ice water. It doesn't have to have ice in it, I don't, but it has to be very, very cold. This came from our water cooler and that has very cold water in it. So that's enough for this experiment. But at home, if you have ice, that's probably the best way to get a very cold glass of water. Also, what you need to have is your um, sandwich bag with a little bit of white goo in it and that white goo is called shortening this is going to be our blubber because remember blubber is fat now don't worry this is vegetable shortening no animals were harmed uh, but it is going to do the same thing that the blubber does for the animal so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to put my left finger in the water how does that feel 
It's really cold, right? Does your finger feel good? Does your finger feel uncomfortable? Is it, is it really cold? If it's too cold, pull your finger out, but it's very cold, right? And think of how those animals feel in that water. They wouldn't like it if they were us, but what they do have is that blubber. So if you have gloves at home, this it makes this experiment less messy, but if you don't have gloves at home, it's fine. You can just put it on your finger. I'm going to put the glove on both hands, take that shortening and spread it all over one finger like this. Try and get around your whole finger, cover the whole thing because these animals have blubber all over their body, not just on one side. Okay. So I have my blubber finger. Hello. Now, I want you to remember how your finger felt before. And now put the finger covered in blubber in the water. How does that feel? Does it feel different from it did before? For me, it does. I barely feel the cold at all. I'm very comfortable. I don't feel like I have to pull my finger out of the water. And that's because of the shortening, which is simulating our blubber. So now you've heard how animals stay warm with blubber, but now you've also felt it for yourself. And that's the cool thing about experiments. Sometimes when you feel something, it's a lot easier to understand than when you've just been told it. So I hope you enjoyed our first experiment and we're gonna move on to the next. All right, now that that's done, before we move on, I want you to go to the page that says more than blubber, because this is unique to polar bears, but I thought these were really great facts, so I wanted to include them anyway, even though we don't have a, um, a an experiment about it. So I'm gonna read it off to you, just in case you don't have it on you, or you need someone to read it to you. So. Polar bears use things other, other than blubber to keep warm. They also have thick fur and utilize the power of color. The power of color, that's a weird phrase, right? I want you to look at the picture. What do you notice about this picture? This is a close-up of polar bears fur and skin. Now look at the picture of your polar bear from warm blood, cold home. Do they look the same? Do it look like they are the same animal? To me, it doesn't, but this is why. So polar bears actually have black skin the, and the color black absorbs heat, which helps keep polar bears warm. You can feel this if you wear a black shirt on a very, very hot day. Sometimes if you touch your shirt, it will be very hot compared to someone wearing a lighter color, like white, like I'm wearing right now. So that black absorbs the heat. So it can be bad if you're wearing a black shirt in the summer or if you're getting into a car in the summer that has black seats. But remember, this polar bear lives somewhere very cold. So this is actually very helpful for them. That's why they have black skin. But why, when you look at a polar bear, they look white? So, it's not actually white. <laughs> their fur is clear, and that helps the light reach their black skin and absorbs all that wonderful heat from the sun. Okay, isn't that cool? I just had to include that, even though we don't have an experiment. So, actually, let's move on so we can do our next experiment. Our next experiment is all about the penguin. So if you want to go back to your sheet and take a look at the penguin, what do you notice about this picture? Do you notice a big difference between the baby and the adult? They look very different, right? Doesn't even look like the same animal. Well, when penguins are babies, they don't have as thick a layer of blubber as the adults do. And remember, blubber is how they stay really warm. So the baby penguin has very, very thick feathers. 
that help it stay warm, and also they stay with an adult until they have enough blubber to keep warm. So all penguins have very, very densely packed feathers, which means they're very close together. They're on top of each other. There isn't much room for air to move past the feathers. But there is also another way that they keep warm, and that is by staying dry. Now, how do they do that when they spend a lot of time in the water? They spend um, all their time hunting in the water. All of their food comes from the ocean. So how could they possibly stay dry? Well, if you've ever seen video of a penguin, sometimes you see them using their beak to kind of scratch their belly or, or their back or anywhere. So are they itchy? Maybe. But one of the reasons why they do it so much is because they have little glands on their body and they're just little places where when they scratch it, oil comes out and coats their feathers. So do you know anything about oil and water? Maybe you do, but if you don't, the next experiment is really going to explain it to you. So we are going to do an experiment called Help the Penguin Stay Dry. I want you to get out that picture of a penguin and be ready with your crayon. Okay, let's find out how penguins stay dry. All right, so now we're gonna see exactly what that oil in the penguin's feathers does. You need to have your white crayon, your picture of the penguin, and a glass of water. You don't need to make your water blue. I've done that so it shows up easier on camera, but at home you'll be able to see the water droplets without co coloring it. I'm also using what's called a pipette to drop the water on, but you don't need to do that either because you don't have colored water. And as you can see, since our last one, I kinda got some blue on me. All right, so, I think you've all used crayons before, but what you may not know is crayons are made of wax. And this wax isn't colored like other crayons are, so it should be invisible when we put it on a penguin's tummy. Now the wax, it, the wax is going to act like the oil on the penguin's feathers. So what I need you to do is I need you to put a lot of white on the penguin's belly. This is gonna be a bit tricky because you're not gonna be able to see where it is and I need you to do it a lot. So I'm going to color my penguin's stomach. Now, my camera is hooked up to the table. So my camera is gonna get a bit shaky, but that's just to show you how much we need on the penguin's stomach. So are you ready? Let's get started. I know it's very exciting TV when you can't see anything I'm doing, but hopefully you're doing this along with me and not really watching the video. So it's not enough just to cover the side. So I've gone from one side to the other. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over top of that so I can be sure there's a nice layer of that wax on the penguin before we go to the next step. So I'm just gonna color and color and color and color. All right, I think that's enough. Got a lot of crayon on that penguin. All right, so you can't really see it, but that's the point of the experiment. You can't really see the oils on the penguin's feathers either. So now, what I want you to do is I want you to take your water, and you can do this with your fingers. Just put some water on the spot where you put the wax, where you colored with your crayon. You see that? It's not really being absorbed by the paper. It's just sitting on top of that wax. Now, how do we know it's doing something special? Well, we know because when we 
do it at the top, the paper is starting to absorb it. It's not sitting in these nice little balls. So that's how we know it's working because up here is our test area, what's called the control. Now I wouldn't put it on anywhere where the penguin is. It, the printer ink kind of also gives it a, a coating. So it's better to do the top or the bottom corners for your test. And you can see as we go on, the water spreads more and these stay the same. So why is that? Why is it doing that? Do you have any ideas? We kind of went over it. There's a wax that's like the oil on the penguin's feathers and it's not letting the water go in. It's not letting it soak into the penguin. And that helps it stay dry because it's not soaking up cold, cold water like a towel. All right, now let's get this water off our penguin and we'll move on. All right, so now we're moving on from how animals stay warm to how sharks float. Do we have any shark fans? I do really like sharks, although I would never want to meet one in the ocean. That would definitely be too scary. One of the things that's interesting about sharks is that a lot of them are very big, and when you look at them, you wonder how do they float? Unlike the other animals we talked about, they don't have blubber, which helps those animals float. And unlike fish, they don't have something called a swim bladder, which is a little organ filled with, wa uh, filled with air that helps them float, not water. So they don't have blubber, they don't have a swim bladder, how do they do it? Well, they they do it, we're gonna talk about three ways today, but we're only gonna do an experiment on one. So let's move on to our first experiment so we can see one of the ways that help sharks float. So our practical experiment on how sharks float is about to start. What you need is a large bowl of water I have our candy bowl for Halloween, but a large mixing bowl will do well. The water doesn't have to be any temperature. I just took it straight from the tap. And then I want you to put your one cup of cooking oil in one of the sandwich bags and one cup of water in the other sandwich bag. Now this is very important. I want you to try and get out as much air as you can before you seal the bag. So kind of squeeze it and then seal it. Because the thing is, we're seeing how things float and water helps things float. So it wouldn't be a very good experiment because we wouldn't know whether it was the water that was making it float or the air. So try and get as much air out as you can. Okay, so what do you think is gonna happen? Are they gonna do different things? Are they gonna do the same thing? This experiment is all about trying or any experiment is all about trying. So think about it for a second. I have two different bags. Why do you think I have that? We're gonna see how they compare, right? So first, we are going to put the bag of water into the bowl. And it may be hard to see, but the bag kind of sank down. Now, our bag of oil and the bag of oil is floating on the top. So the water sank and the oil floated. If your water bag floated, you might have too much air in it. So how does this relate to sharks? Well, in our body and in sharks' bodies, we have an organ called a liver and in a shark's body, they have a very, very fatty liver. So oil is fat. So this bag represents the shark's liver. So this very, very fatty liver helps the shark float in the water because they don't have any blubber like the mammals do. The mammals have blubber to stay warm and since sharks are cold-blooded, they don't need to stay warm. 
So they don't have blubber to help them float, but they do have their fatty liver. So they have other things. It's not just their liver that helps them float, but we'll talk about that in a second. So back to the science. All right, so now that we're finished with our experiment, I'm going to explain two more things about the shark's body that help it float. I want you to take out the page marked, how do sharks float? And up at the top, I mentioned the swim bladder again, but what I really want you to do is look at these top two pictures. Do you know what this one is? It's kind of hard to tell since you don't have the whole thing, but there might be a hint because there are a lot of clouds in the background. This is the tail of an airplane. And this is a shark, obviously. When you look at the two, do you notice anything similar? They kind of are shaped similar, right? And this has a fin here and some fins going out. And this has a fin here and some, well, flippers going out. And the tail. All right, so they look similar, right? That is because they do the same thing. They have the same function. The way that those are shaped helps create lift. And just like when someone lifts you up, lift helps keep sharks floating. So how do they do that? The way the fin is shaped keeps water moving over the shark faster than the water moving under the shark. And that helps create lift. Okay, but it seems like sharks would be too heavy that a fin and a fatty liver would help it float. And that's where the other difference comes in. Unlike us, sharks don't have bones. Instead, they have cartilage. Now, you might not know what cartilage is, but feel your ears. You can move them, right? Move them around especially the top of your ear, that is made of cartilage. It's not made of bone. So cartilage is lighter than bone. So having cartilage instead of bone helps the shark float, which is why they float easier than we do because we have lots of bones in our body. All right, so that is three ways that sharks bodies help them float. All right, so we have come to the end of our second animal grab and go. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. And if you like this program, we are going to be continuing it. So every month from now on until we can have programs in the library again, we're going to have a grab and go STEM program. Next month, we are going to be exploring static electricity. You might not know what that is, but it is going to be a really good time. So thank you all for signing up. Thank you for following along with me and thank you for participating in our summer reading program. If you're watching this before the 13th, remember our end of summer reading party is on August 13th from three to four o'clock. It's gonna be outside the library. It's gonna be a ton of fun. So come if you can. All right, thank you and bye.